What is up, bros and broettes? It's Inkslasher44, and today we are talking about Call of Duty Ghosts, more specifically the reinforced game type, the most recently added game type to Call of Duty Ghosts. But first, I'd just like to quickly say... Thank you to everyone that has been commenting and liking my most recent videos. It's super greatly appreciated. I love the subscribers that do that. And if you do comment on my videos, I generally tend to kind of comment back. We get a little conversation going. I really enjoy doing that. So if you don't normally comment on my videos, it's super greatly appreciated when you do. It, it makes a good feedback reel for me, and it's fantastic. And also leave likes and dislikes, depending on what you think of the video, and that helps me out a lot, a lot more when you leave likes, but it helps me out either way, so thank you very much for those of you who are doing that, and keep on doing that, and let's get into this video. So, right away, let's talk about the pros and cons of this game type. Pros are, it's a lot of fun, and it's a lot of fun to play with friends. Why? Because it's a 4v4 game, and I'm gonna put that as a pro and a con. It makes it more strategic, however, it makes it so that if you have a couple bad teammates like I did in this game, it makes the game a lot harder, and it also makes it so that you can't play all the maps in the game. Since it's a 4v4 game type, it makes it so that you can't play on any of the big maps, like Siege, Stormfront, um... Stonehaven, any of those maps. You can't play on any of them because a 4v4 game on those maps would just last for freaking ever because we know how great they did with the maps in Call of Duty Ghost. I, I'm being sarcastic if you didn't pick up on it. But, so, right away you're eliminating half the maps in the game, which creates a kind of stale game. It makes it so that um, you can kind of get sick of the game type a little quicker. Also, my last con that I'd like to say about this game type is no one knows how to play it. You're going to notice how we spawn at sea here and then our team runs and grabs the sea flag. You do not want to do that. This is the main reason why I'm making this video. I want to talk about the proper strategy to playing Reinforce. And it's a very precise strategy. It's a very easy strategy. And it will win you pretty much 90% of the games you play. Especially if you're playing with good players. Um, as you're gonna notice, I'm playing with one other person. I'm playing with the Twerk Fairy. He is my friend. He is the same person I play with in pretty much every game you watch on my channel. Uh, he's, I love playing with him. We have a lot of fun. And playing this game type was really frustrating for us because none of our teammates knew how to play the game. So, like I said, you're gonna notice when we spawn in, our team takes the sea flag right away. Your home flag, we'll call it. You don't want them to do that. Why? Because what do the flags control? The flags control two things. The time in the game and also when players spawn in. So, if you die, you don't respawn until a teammate takes a flag that hasn't been captured yet. So, what this does is when you leave the flag, when you leave that flag until a couple people on your team die, you can then spawn them in. Why is this beneficial? So, say two people on your team are killed, and in doing so, one person on their team has died, but they captured their home flag already. What you can do is hop on your home flag and make it so that the other team is down one person, you are then back to your full four people, and you are up one person. They've already captured their home flag. You're up one person, and both of you have to fight over the middle flag. It creates a more more strategic way of controlling the amount of people on your team, because really the only ways to finish this game are killing everyone on the other team or triple capping and triple capping very very rarely happens um where i'm going with this is that you never want to capture your home flag it is a horrible horrible idea okay so now that we've established that we've established you never want to capture that home flag you never want to capture that flag where you spawn what do you want to do with the middle flag when do you want to capture that one and there's a couple answers to this there's a couple really really good times to capture it First being when a couple players on your team are down and a couple players on their team are down. So when it's like 2v2 or 1v2 or something like that, it is a great time, a fantastic time to hop on that B flag, assuming that your home flag is already captured. Hopping on that B flag, what does this do? It respawns everyone on your team and brings the time limit down to 45 seconds. So this really, really pushed the, puts the pressure on them. If they only have two people, you then have four and the time limit's down to 45 seconds. Th that creates a really, really full of havoc environment for the other team. So that's a great time to do it. But let's say the time is running out and it's still 4v4. Would, should you capture that middle flag? And the answer is yes. Why? If it's 4v4, both of you had captured your home flag. 
What this does is it brings the time limit down even more and puts you in a strategic position to guard the central and your home flag, let the opponents come to you, and you control the engagement. It, it is a really elegant way of speeding up the game and controlling the engagement at the same time. And this works really, really well when you're playing against better teams, because what, what happens when you're playing better teams is basically... You kill a couple people, they capture their home flag. They kill a couple people, you capture your home flag. And then you're it's a fight over that middle flag at the end of the game. And sometimes they go for your home flag. They could go flank around. and But that's very, very rare. So this whole waiting strategy, waiting until the later moments in the game, really creates a harsh environment for people who are really impatient, like myself. But it also creates an environment for a really exciting end of a game and that is why I love this gameplay or game type sorry is because of that end of the game where it gets so intense when it's 1v1 or even 3v2 and you're fighting over those flags flags swapping everywhere I played one game on fog and it was just insane but yeah guys it, it great game type if you know how to play it and please play it properly and I, I thought the end of this game was freaking hilarious by the way guys uh, let's just talk about it quickly. So, um, as you can see here, I hop on the B flag, and our team is down to just me. It's just me in the game. So I hop on the B flag that they just took. It is now 4v3. Uh, our team spawns with me at B, and we are, have them trapped in their spawn. I get a Trinity rocket, and our team kills two of the three people. So I see the third person back in their spawn, and he's flanking around me. He's about to kill me. He starts shooting me, and he gets turned on. When that happened in the game, I lost my shit. I thought it was the funniest thing that has ever happened. Just because that Trinity rocket actually helped me kill him, he definitely should have killed me. It was kind of stupid that he was running towards me. I don't know what he was thinking. But it was created for a hilarious final kill cam. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think of the reinforced game type. Uh, if you haven't seen either of the two videos on the screen, click them and check them out. And until next time, guys, peace out.